Rathapala Sutta, about Rathapala. I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One on a wandering tour among the Gurus with a large community of monks arrived at Thulla Kothika, Thulla Kothita, a town of the Gurus. The Brahmans and householders of Thulla Kothita heard it said, Gotama, the contemplative, the son of the Sakyans, having gone forth from the Sakyan clan, has arrived at, at Thulla Kothika, Kothita. And of that master Gotama, this fine reputation has spread. He is indeed a blessed one, worthy and rightly self-awakened, consummate in knowledge and conduct, well gone, a knower of the cosmos, an unexcelled trainer of those persons ready to be tamed, teacher of human and divine beings, awakened, blessed. He has made known, having realized it through direct knowledge, this world with its devas, maras and brahmas, its generations with their contemplatives and brahmans, brahmans, their rulers and common people. He has explained the Dhamma admirable in the beginning, admirable in the middle, admirable in the end, has expounded the holy life both in its particulars and in its essence, entirely perfect, surpassingly pure. It's good to see such a worthy one. So the Brahmans and householders of Thulla Kothita went to the Blessed One on arrival, some of them bowed down to the Blessed One and set to one side. Some of them, them exchanged courteous greetings with them, him and after an exchange of friendly greetings and courtesies set to one side. Some of them set to one side having saluted him with their hands palm to palm over their hearts. Some of them set to one side having announced their name and clan. Some of them set to one side in silence as they were sitting there, the Blessed One instructed, urged, roused, and encouraged them with a talk on Dhamma. Now at that time a clansman rammed, named Rathapala, the son of the leading clan in that same Thulla Kothita, was sitting in that assembly. The thought occurred to him, As I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it's not easy, living at home, to practice the holy life, totally perfect, totally pure, a Polish cell. What if I, having shaved off my hair and beard and putting on the ochre robe, were to go forth from the household life into homelessness? Then the Brahmans and householders of Thulla Kothita, having been instructed, urged, roused and encouraged by the Blessed One's talk on Dhamma, delighted and rejoiced in his words. Rising from he, their seats, bowing down to him, they left, keeping him on their right. Then Rathapala, not long after the Brahmans and householders of Thulla Kothita had left, approached the Blessed One and, on arrival, said to him, As I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it's not easy living at home to practice the holy life, totally perfect, totally pure, a Polish cell. Lord, I want, having saved off my hair and board and putting on the ochre robe to go, go, to go forth from the household life into homelessness. May I receive the going forth in the Blessed One's presence? May I receive admission? Do you have your parents' permission, Rathapala, to go forth from the household life into homelessness? No, Lord, I haven't. Rathapala, Tathagat, do not give the going force to anyone who does not have his parents' permission. Lord, I will do what needs to be done so that my parents will give their permission for me to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Then Rathapala, rising from his seat, bowing down to the Blessed One and keeping him on his right, went to his parents and said, Mom, Dad, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it's not easy living at home to practice the holy life, totally perfect, totally pure, a Polish cell. 
I want, having saved off my hair and board and putting on the ochre robe, to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Please give me your permission to go forth from the household life into homelessness. When this was said, Rathapala's parents said to him, Rathapala, dear, you are our only son, dear and appealing, raised in comfort, brought up in comfort, you know nothing of suffering, eat, drink and enjoy yourself. While eating, drinking and looking after yourself, you may enjoy yourself by indulging in sensual pleasures and making merit. You don't give up, we don't give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Even with your death, we would not want to be separated from you. So how could we, while you are alive, give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness? A second time, a third time, Rathapala said to his parents, Mom, Dad, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it's not easy living at home to practice the holy life, totally perfect, totally pure, a Polish shell. I want, having saved off my hair and board and putting on the ochre robe, to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Please give me your permission to go forth from the household life into homelessness. A third time, Rathapala's parents said to him, Rathapala, dear, you are our only son, dear and appealing, raised in comfort, brought up in comfort, you know nothing of suffering, eat, drink and enjoy yourself. While eating, drinking and looking after yourself, you may enjoy yourself by indulging in sensual pleasures and making merit. We don't give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Even we, with your death, we would not want to, to be separated from you. So how could we, while you are alive, give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness? Then Rathapala, not getting his parents' permission to go forth from the household life into homelessness, lay down right there on the bare floor, saying, Here will be my death or my going forth. And he went without food for one day, two day, three days, four, five, six days. He went without food for seven days. His parents said to him, Rathapala, dear, you are, you are our only son, dear and appealing, Raised in comfort, brought up in comfort, you know nothing of suffering. Get up, dear, eat, drink and enjoy yourself. While eating, drinking and looking after yourself, you may enjoy yourself by indulging in sensual pleasures and making merit. We don't give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Even with your death, we would not want to be separated from you. So how could we, while you are alive, give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. When this was said, Rathapala remained silent. A second time, a third time, Rathapala's parents said to him, Rathapala, dear, you are our only son, dear and appealing, raised in comfort, brought up in comfort, you know nothing of suffering. Get up, dear, eat, drink and enjoy yourself. While eating, drinking and looking after yourself, you may enjoy yourself by indulging in sensual pleasures and making merit. We don't give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. Even with your death, we would not want to be separated from you. So how could we, while you are alive, give our permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness? A third time, Rathapala remained silent. Then Rathapala's parents went to his friends and said to them, My dears, Rathapala has lain down on the bare floor saying, Here will be my death or my going forth. Please, dears, go to the Rathapala and say to him, Friend Rathapala, you are your parents' only son. Get up, friend Rathapala, eat, drink and enjoy yourself. How could your parents, while you are alive, give their permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness. So Rathapala's friends went to Rathapala and on arrival said to him, Friend Rathapala, you are your parents' only son. 
get up friend rathapala eat drink and enjoy yourself how could your parents while you are alive give their permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness when this was said rathapala remained silent a second time a third time his friend said to him friend rathapala you are your parents only son get up friend rathapala eat drink and enjoy yourself how could your parents while you are alive give their permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness a third time rathapala remained silent so rathapala's friends went to his parents and on arrival said to them mom dad rathapala is lying there on the bare floor having said here will be my death or my going forth if you don't give him your permission to go forth from the household life into homelessness right there will be his death but if you do give him your permission then even when he has gone forth you will see him and if he does not enjoy going forth from the household life into homelessness where else will he go he will return right here so please give him permission to go forth from the household life into homelessness then dears we give our permission for rathapala to go forth from the household life into homelessness but but when he has gone forth he must visit his parents then rathapala's friends went to him and said get up rathapala your parents give their permission for you to go forth from the household life into homelessness but when you have gone forth you must visit your parents then rathapala got up and on regaining his strength went to the blessed one on arrival having bowed down to him he said to one side as he was sitting there he said to the blessed one i have received my parents permission lord to go forth from the household life into homelessness may the blessed one give me the going forth then rathapala the clansman obtained the going forth in the blessed one's presence he obtained admission and not long after his admission one half month after his admission the blessed one having stayed at thulla kothika as long as he liked set out set out wandering to sabathi wandering by stages he eventually arrived at sabathi there he lived at sabathi in jetaj grove anath pindika's a monastery as for venerable rathapala dwelling alone secluded heedful ardent and resolute he in lo- no long time reached and remained in the supreme goal of the holy life for whose clansmen rightly go forth from home into homelessness knowing and realizing it for himself in the here and now he knew birth is indeed the holy life fulfilled the task done there is nothing further for the sake of this world and the venerable rathapala became another one of the arahants then venerable rathapala went to the blessed one and on arrival having bowed down to him said to one side as he was sitting there he said to the blessed one lord i want to visit my parents if you give me permission then the blessed one in compassing venerable rathapala's awareness with his awareness considered and understood venerable rathapala is incapable of leaving the training and reverting to the lower life so he said to him now is the time rathapala for you to do as you see fit then venerable rathapala rising from his seat bowing down to the blessed one and keeping him on his right departed putting his lodgings in order and carrying his bowl and robes set out wandering toward thulla kothita wandering by stages he eventually arrived at thulla kothita there he stayed in thulla kothita in kings korabyaz miga migasira garden then early in the morning putting on his under robe and carrying his bowl and robes he went into thulla kothita for arms as he went from for arms from house to house in thulla kothita he came to his one father's house now at that time venerable rathapala's father was in the middle door pores having his hair combed he saw venerable rathapala coming from afar and on seeing him said it was by these seven headed contemplatives 
that our only son, dear and appealing, was made to go forth. So Venerable Rathapala, instead of receiving a gift or a polite refusal at his own father's house, got nothing but abuse. Just then a slave woman belonging to one of his relatives was about to throw away some day-old porridge. So Venerable Rathapala said to her, Sister, if that is to be thrown away, pour it here into my bowl. While she was pouring the day-old porridge into this bowl, he, she recognized his hands, feet, and voice. So she went to his mother and said, May it please you to know, my lady, that master, son, Rathapala has arrived. Hey, if what you say is true, I give you your freedom. Then Venerable Rathapala's mother went to his father and said, May it please you to know, householder, that they say the clansman Rathapala has arrived. Now at that time, Venerable Rathapala was sitting by a wall, eating the day-old porridge. His father went to him and said, Rathapala, my dear, isn't there what you are eating day-old porridge? Don't you have your own home to go to? Go to? How could we have a home householder? We have gone forth from the household life into homelessness. We are homeless, householder. We went to your house, but instead of receiving a gift or a polite refusal, we got nothing but abuse. Come, dear Rathapala, let's go home. Enough, householder, my meal for today is finished. In that case, dear Rathapala, a quiz to meal for tomorrow. So, Venerable Rathapala, a quiz in silence. Understanding Venerable Rathapala's acquiescence, his father went to his house and having the floor coated with fresh cow dung, had a great heap of gold and silver made, two great heaps made, one of a gold, one of silver, so large that a man standing on the near side could not see a man standing on the far side, just as a man standing on the far side could not see a man standing on the near. Hiding them behind screens, he set out a seat between them, surrounded by a curtains. Addressing Venerable Rathapala's former wives, he said to them, Come, daughters-in-law, adorn yourself in the ornaments that our son Rathapala used to find dear and appealing. Then, as the night was ending, Venerable Rathapala's father had exuciate staple and non-staple foods prepared in his own house and had the time announced to Venerable Rathapala, It's time, dear Rathapala, the meal is ready. Then early in the morning, putting on his uh, under robe and carrying his bowl and robes, Venerable Rathapala went to his father's house and on arrival sat down on the seat made ready. Then his father, revealing the heap of gold and silver, said to him, this, my dear Rathapala, is your mother's inheritance. The other is your father's. The other your grandfather's. Enough that. You can enjoy wealth and make merit. Come, my dear Rathapala, leave the training and revert to the lower life. Enjoy wealth and make merit. Householder, if you would say, as I say, you would have this heap of gold and silver, loaded on cars and hauled away to be dumped mid-stream in the river Ganges. Why is that? This wealth will be the cause of your sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress and despair. Then clasping each of his feet, Venerable Rathapala's former wives said to him, What are they like, dear master son, those names for, for whose sake you lead the holy life? Sisters, we don't lead the holy life for the sake of names. Sisters, he, call, he calls us, and they fell down right there in a faint. Then Venerable Rathapala said to his father, Householder, if there's food to be given, then give it. Don't harass us. Eat, then my dear Rathapala, the meal is ready. So with his own hands, Venerable Rathapala's father served and satisfied him with ex it staple and non-staple foods when he had finished his meal and withdrawn 
his hand from the bowl when rebel rathapala stood up and recited these verses look at the image beautified a heap of festering ounce sword of ill but the object of many resolves where there is no thing lasting or sure look at the form beautified with earrings and gems a skeleton wrapped in skin made attractive with clothes feet reddened with henna a face smeared with powder enough to deceive a fool but not a seeker for the further shore hair plaited in eight pleats eyes smeared with unguent enough to deceive a fool but not a seeker for the further shore like a newly painted unguent pot a putrid body adorned enough to deceive a fool but not a seeker for the further shore the hunter set out the snares but the deer didn't go near the trap having eaten the bait we go leaving the hunters to eat after reciting these verses while standing venerable rathapala went to king korabya's migasira on arrival he sat down in the shade of a tree for the days avoiding then king korabya said to his gamekeeper clean up the migasira pleasure garden i am going there to see the beautiful grounds as you say your majesty the gamekeeper responded to the king as he was cleaning up migasira he saw venerable rathapala sitting in the shade of a tree for the days avoiding on seeing him he went to the king and said migasira has been cleaned up for you your majesty and the clansman rathapala the son of the leading clan in this thulla kotita of whom you have often spoken highly is there sitting in the shade of a tree for the days avoiding in that case my dear game keeper never mind about the pleasure garden for today i am now going to pay my respect to that master rathapala then say uh, then saying give away all the staple and non staple foods that have been prepared king korabya had auspicious vehicles harnessed mounting an auspicious vehicle he set out from thulla kotita accompanied by other auspicious vehicles in full royal pomp to see venerable rathapala going as far by vehicle as the ground would permit he dismounted and, and went to venerable rathapala accompanied by many eminent members of his court on arrival he exchanged courteous greeting with venerable rathapala after an exchange of friendly greeting and courtesies he stood to one side as he was standing there he said to venerable uh, rathapala may master rathapala sit here on the elephant rug never mind great king you sit there i am sitting on my one seat so king korabya sat down on the seat prepared as he was sitting there he said to venerable rathapala there are cases where having suffered these uh, four kinds of loss men save of their hair and blood put on the ochre robe and go forth from the home life into homelessness which for loss through aging loss through illness loss of wealth and loss of relatives but master rathapala has suffered none of these what did he know or see or hear that Ma master rathapala went forth from the home life into homelessness great king there are four dhamma summaries stated by the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened having known and seen and heard them i went forth from the home life into homelessness which for the world is swept away it does not endure this is the first dhamma summary stated by the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened having known and seen and heard it i went forth from the home life into homelessness the world is without shelter without protector this is the second dhamma summary the world is without ownership one has to pass on leaving everything behind this is the third dhamma summary the world is insufficient insatiable a slave to craving this is the fourth dhamma summary fourth dhamma summary these great king are the four dhamma summaries stated by the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened having known and seen and heard them i went forth from the home life into homelessness master rathapala you say the world is swept away it does not endure now 
how is the meaning of this statement to be understood what do you think great king when you were 20 or 25 years old an expert elephant rider an expert horseman an expert charioteer an expert archer an expert swordsman were you strong in arm and strong in thigh feet and seasoned in warfare yes master rathapala when i was 20 or 25 years old i was strong in arm strong in thigh feet and seasoned in warfare it was as if i had super normal power i do not see anyone who was my equal in strength and what do you think great king are you even now as strong in arm and strong in thigh as feet as seasoned in warfare not at all master rathapala i am now a feeble old man aged advanced in years having come to the last stage of my life eight years old sometimes thinking i will be place my foot here i place it somewhere else it was in reference to this great king that the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened said the world uh, the world is swept away it does not endure having known and seen and heard this i went forth from the home life into homelessness it's amazing master rathapala it's astounding how well that has been said by the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened the world is swept away it does not endure for the world really is swept away master rathapala it does not endure now in this royal court there are elephant troops and cavalry and chariot troops and infantry that will serve to defend us from dangers and yet you say the world is without shelter without protector how is the meaning of this statement to be understood what do you think great king do you have any recurring illness yes master rathapala i have a recurring wind illness sometimes my friends and advisers relatives and blood kinsmen stand around me saying this time king korabhya will die this time king korabhya will die and what do you think great king one can you say to your friends and advisers relatives and blood kinsmen my friends and advisers relatives and blood kinsmen are command, commanded all of you who are present share out this pain so that i may feel less pain or do you have to feel that pain all alone oh no master rathapala i can say to my friends and advisers relatives and blood kinsmen all of you who are present share out this pain so that i may feel less pain i have to feel that pain all alone it was in reference to this great king that the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened said the world is without shelter without protector having known and seen and heard this i went forth from the home life into homelessness it's amazing master rathapala it's astounding how well that has been said by the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened the world is without shelter without protector for the world really is without shelter master rathapala it is without protector now in this royal court there is a great deal of gold and silver stacks stacked away underground and in attic vaults and yet you say the world is without ownership one has to pass on leaving everything behind how is the meaning of this statement to be understood what do you think great king as you know as you now enjoy yourself endowed and replete with the pleasures of the five senses can you say even in the afterlife i will enjoy myself in the same way endowed and replete with the very same pleasures of the five senses or will this wealth fall to others while you pass on in accordance accordance with your karma oh no master rathapala i can't say even in the after life i will enjoy myself in the same way endowed and replete with the very same pleasures of the five senses this wealth will fall to others while i pass on in accordance with my karma it was in reference to this great king that that the blessed one who knows and sees worthy and rightly self awakened said the world is without ownership one has to pass on leaving everything behind having known and seen and heard this i went forth from the home life into homelessness 
It's amazing, Master Rathapala. It's astounding. How well that has been said by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, worthy and rightly self-awakened. The world is without ownership. One has to pass on, leaving everything behind. For the world really is without ownership, Master Rathapala. One has to pass on, leaving everything behind. Now, Master Rathapala, you say, the world is insufficient, insatiable, a slave to craving. How is the meaning of this statement to be understood? What do you think, Great King? Do you now rule over the prosperous country of Kuru? That is so, Master Rathapala. I rule over the prosperous country of Kuru. What do you think, Great King? Suppose a trustworthy, reliable man of yours wait to come to you from the east. On arrival, he would say to you, May it please your majesty to know, I have come from the east. There I saw a great country, powerful and prosperous, populous and crowded with people. Plenty are the elephant troops there, plenty the cavalry troops, chariot troops and infantry troops. Plenty is the ivory work there, plenty the gold and silver, both worked and unworked. Plenty are the women for the taking. It is possible with the forces you now have to con con Conquer it, conquer it, great king. What would you do? Having conquered it, Master Rathapala, I would rule over it. Now, what do you think, think, great king? Suppose a trustworthy, reliable man of yours wait to come to you from the west, the north, the south, the other side of the ocean. On arrival, he would say to you, May it please your majesty to know, I have come from the other side of the ocean. There I saw a great country, powerful and prosperous, populous and crowded with people. Plenty are the elephant troops there, plenty the cavalry troops, chariot troops and infantry troops. Plenty is the ivory work there, plenty the gold and silver, both worked and unworked. Plenty are the women for the taking. It is possible with the forces you have now to conquer it, conquer it, great king. What would you do? Having conquered it, Master Rathapala, I would rule over it too. It was in reference to this great king that the Blessed One, who knows and sees, worthy and rightly self-awakened, said, The world is insufficient, insatiable, a slave to craving, having known and seen and heard this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. It's amazing, Master Rathapala, it's astounding, how well that has been said by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, Worthy and rightly self-awakened, the world is insufficient, insatiable, a slave to craving. For the world really is insufficient, Master Rathapala, it's insatiable, a slave to craving. That is what Vendebal Rathapala said, having said that, he further said this. I see in the world people with wealth, who from delusion don't make a gift of the treasure they have gained, greedy they stats it away hoping for even more sensual pleasures. A king who by force has conquered the world and rules over the earth to the ease of the sea, dissatisfied with the ocean's near shore, longs for the ocean's far shore as well. Kings and others, plenty of people, go to death with craving, unabated, unsated, they leave the body behind, having not had enough of the world's sensual pleasures. Once relatives weep and pull out their hair, oh, oh, our loved one is dead, they cry. Carrying him off, wrapped in a piece of cloth, they place him on a pyre, then set him on a fire. So he burns, poked with sticks, in just one piece of cloth, leaving all his possessions behind. They are not shelters for one who has died, not relatives, friends, or companions. His hairs take over his wealth, while on the being goes on, in line with his kamma, no wealth at all, follows the dead one, dead one, not real children, wives, dominion or riches. Long life can't be gone with wealth, nor aging, warded off with freezure. The wise say this life is next, no, next to nothing, impermanent, subject to change. The rich and the poor toss the touch of death, the foolish and wise are touched by it too, but while who fly as if slain by their folly, the wise don't tremble when touched by the touch. Thus the discernment by which one attains to mastery is better than wealth. 
for those who haven't reached mastery go from existence to existence out of delusion doing bad one goes to a womb and to the next world falling into the one ring on one thing after another whose while those of weak discernment trusting in one also go to one to end to the next world just as an evil thief caught at the break in is destroyed by his one act so evil people after dying in the next world are destroyed by their own acts sensual pleasures variegated enticing sweet in various ways disturb the mind seeing the drawbacks in sensual objects that's why o king i went forth just like fruits people fall young and old at the break up of the body knowing this o king i went forth the contemplative life is better for sure